YouTube and welcome to another episode of Maximilian Photography, the YouTube channel for digital photography, techniques and post-processing. Last week we've been out in the field together, taking an infrared photo using a screw-on IR filter, but no matter how you took your infrared photo, you're probably here because you want to know how to post-process it, and that's what I'm going to show you today. So after you took your infrared image, you probably checked it out and found it to be surprisingly rad and looking somehow like this. Well, as you see, the same thing happened to me and that is perfectly normal because we took a photo exclusively in the spectrum of red light. In order to fix this up, we need to set our custom white balance either in camera or in camera raw. In camera, it depends on your camera manufacturer how exactly to do that. You basically need to take a photograph of something that you know is white in the infrared spectrum, which usually is foliage, so either a patch of grass will do or a pine tree in the winter time, and you tell your camera that that is the white balance you want. But if you miss that, or you're just too lazy to do that, or you don't want to mess around with the white balance too much and you always have it on auto. Whatever reason for you can also do it on the computer and this is what I'm going to do. Alright so here we are. Just let me open this file in camera raw. Actually in this raw file I reset all my settings so what you see is the file straight out of camera. I use the auto white balance and you can see it's got that gross red look to it that we don't really like in our image. Of course we could edit the image in that way too with an orange stripe and of course there is an unlimited amount of possibilities how to edit your image because you are dealing with false colors so there is no wrong or right. But what I want to show in this tutorial is how to get the sky blue and the foliage either white or magenta. And depending on the color that you want the foliage to have there is a couple possibilities but I'm going to show you first how to edit it for a white leaves in the trees. So for now I'm going to use the white balance tool and in order to get the color right, <laughs> as right as we can get, I'm going to select an area of bright foliage which I know is supposed to be white and there we go that looks much better already. Now we've got an orange sky and almost white trees and that is perfectly fine because we will have to swap the red and the blue channel later on in order to get a blue sky. There is no way to get that right right away in camera raw without Photoshop or any other post processing software. But for now we want an orange sky and this looks pretty good to me already so let's just quickly tweak some parameters to just get a little more contrast here and a little bit more clarity. Some more vibrance as well and I have to apologize because I'm actually using the German camera raw version here and I haven't figured out yet how to change the language if that is even possible. But I will explain things as I go and I will name the parameters I'm using. So right here, this looks pretty good already, let's go for a little bit more contrast and that's beautiful. I will pull the lights down a little bit just to get a darker sky later on because I really like that effect. But that is a matter of personal taste. Give it a little bit more boost with the curves. Ah, that looks nice. Um, you see I have a little bit of a vignette going on here in this image. Personally, me, it doesn't bother. But if it's something that bothers you, that's an easy fix as well. You just go to the lens correction panel and you adjust the vignette. But I like it because it draws my eye right into the image, to the actually lit area where the sun hits the rocks and the water and the trees. And I really appreciate that effect in this image. The next thing is sharpening and especially if you use the cheap filter that is an important step in the process. So a good trick when you when you tweak the sharpening sliders always is to hold your alt key and that will show you in black and white what actually is happening in the image and gives you a way better idea than just judging it with colors. Um, the radius in this case I want to go quite high just just because I think that works the best in this image. Um, you, you see a halo appearing in the black and white version. It, it's not really visible once you go back to the color mode after you release the alt key. Um, you see a lot of grain also going on here which actually isn't grain or dirt or dust as you could suspect. 
Um, I think it's only hot pixel. It was a really hot day out. It was almost 40 degrees. I had the camera going for quite a bit and took a 11 minute exposure. So yeah, unfortunately <laughs> these are all hot pixels. But I'll show you how to get rid of them as well in case you have them. So the first step is actually in camera raw to just drag the color slider up all the way and you see what that does? It gets rid of all the color noise. And especially in this image that is not a problem. We can also get rid of all the color details and apply some more color smoothening because we have a really limited range of colors in this image. So that is pretty good. I'm happy with the result so far. Maybe a little more luminance because the, the risk with luminance in my opinion is that it gives that kind of oil painting appeal to your image if if you apply it too much but in this case we are working on an artistic image and in my opinion that is not a big deal if it has a little bit of that painting touch to it if you mind it don't touch the luminance whatever personal taste so i'm quite happy with the results so far let me zoom out to fit view and that looks pretty good already i reckon we could drag up the darks a little bit more yeah yeah that's definitely better pull down the blacks a little give it more contrast we don't need split toning at all we pretty much have split toning going on already anyway and yeah let me open the image and now the magic is going to happen but first let me convert that layer into a smart object because that way i can always undo or change filters that i apply which you can't if you're just dealing with a regular layer. So I already set this up as an action. You see swap RB, swap red and blue channel, but I'll show you how to do it. It's really easy and this is pretty much the main thing to do in this whole process. So we go to corrections, um, channel mixer, and we are in the red channel by default, which is perfect, and we drag it down to zero and we push up the blues to a hundred and then we do the same thing with the blues we drag up the reds to a hundred and we're getting closer and we already got a blue sky and then we pull the blue downs to zero and you can see that this is doing pretty well already and now you can see why i converted it into a smart object this does not look great yet but in order to get your image perfect, you gotta use the camera raw filter twice because you can't really tell how the image will turn out when you use it the first time before you swap the channels. But you gotta use it before you swap your channel because camera raw doesn't offer that function. So at this stage, I'm going to apply another set of camera raw filter and well, there's a few things to consider right here. In my opinion, the blues are a little too saturated, especially in this area. Um, the sky is fine, but we have blue two times here, and I want to process them differently, so I'm going to use the local adjustment brush, and I'm going to reset it, and drag down the saturation a little bit, but also give it more clarity. That looks much better already, in my opinion, and I don't like the yellowish orange tones in the trees so i want to get rid of them right away before i do anything else so i go into the color panel and i go to the colors and i desaturate the yellows and the oranges as well and that looks much better in my opinion also i don't like that they are kind of dark i rather have them i rather have them a little brighter so i'm going to brighten all these up and that looks better already so we can apply the curves as well just to increase the contrast in a nicer more dramatic way than the simple contrast slider and there we go that looks good already so actually maybe the blacks could use a little increasement and then the darks could yeah yeah the darks could use a little lower level so that looks fine to me um, in the middle of the image you can tell that it's much brighter and i really mean much brighter than the rest of the image so i'm going to use the local adjustment brush again with less exposure 
lower blacks and more contrast even more contrast and you can see especially as I go down with this slider you can see greens coming in as well so let me jump over to the color panel and desaturate the greens because we don't want any greens in here and you can see aquas coming out here too let me drag them a little bit more into the blue less luminance and a little bit less saturation and therefore they are less outstanding and just blend in nicely so that is pretty much it of course you can do a better job and of course you can you know go all fancy but that would just take too long for this video so i'm fine with these settings and that is pretty much the final image of course you can you know i didn't get the horizon perfectly straight this looks a little better in my opinion and you can go on and make improvements to your image but what i wanted to show you is just another way of setting the white balance so i'm going to open the image again and tweak the white balance so first let me reset it as taken <laughs> wow wow that looks even worse than out of camera with the rest of the adjustments I made but I'm going to pull this up no yeah that looks nice because this way we have magenta trees we still have an orange sky of course we need to adjust our colors again a little bit um, desaturate the magentas in general desaturate the whole image a little bit but I can tell you even when swapping the red and the blue channel because magenta is a mixture of red and blue these are going to keep roughly the same color whereas the sky will flip over into the blue color so this is going to be a really beautiful effect um, I don't like them to be super pink which is why I desaturated a little bit uh, that looks nicer um, the whole image looks kind of overexposed but also this might change after we swap the channels so let's just open it the way we have it and just swap channels again and that is the look I was talking about you can tell it's overexposed and you can tell the blues are too bright but you get an idea of what I mean and just let me quickly show you what um, what I was talking about earlier getting rid of these hot pixels and they're really quite outstanding when you zoom in all the way the sharpness isn't too bad and we still can apply a little bit more sharpening or more clarity if we want to but for now just let me go into filter noise dust and scratches and you see what's happening it's getting rid of most of the noise you can tell before after before after and if you if you watch closely like this rock for example you can tell that it doesn't lose any sharpness at all um, it's just more outstanding that the image isn't perfectly sharp <laughs> by now um, but yeah, you can always shrink the image a little bit, which helps with the sharpness if you use the right mode for that. Um, it would be smaller sharpened. But you can also apply just another set of camera raw filter with the right sharpening options. And then if you're really into that and you have the same problem as I do here, you can of course clone stamp the remaining little bits and pieces out. But yeah, this is version 1 and this is version 2 and they both look kind of cool don't they so that's pretty much it there we've got our two options option one would be a blue sky with white foliage that is likely to have a little bit of a yellow hue but it's easy to get rid of that to achieve that you just use the white balance tool and swap channels that's pretty much it for the second option with magenta foliage and trees you rather stay in the magenta section of the green magenta slider but still go for the coolest temperature that you can and then you swap channels as well and adjust the rest by your personal liking in camera raw so i hope you enjoyed the video learned something from it if you did hit the subscribe button and leave me a thumbs up and i'll see you next week with another fun topic Hey guys, in order to make things a little bit easier for you when you post process your infrared images, I recorded a couple of actions for you that you can download below and easily import into Photoshop. One of them just swaps the red and the blue channel as I did in the video. The other one is kind of a coloring action that you can play around with. I hope you enjoy them and have fun.
As a last note, I would like to add that of course there is unlimited possibilities of how you could edit your infrared image. You're dealing with false colors and therefore there is absolutely no wrong or right and everything works. So enjoy editing your images, stay inspired, keep shooting and I'll talk to you next week. Have a fun time.